Hey everyone, my name is Reggie and welcome to my channel. Today I will be sharing with you my August wrap up. So these are all of the books that I read in August. There's nine of them in total, which is exciting because I'm finally getting my reading groove back. <laughs> if you're new around here and haven't done so already, I definitely recommend hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification. That bell notification will make sure that you are notified when I post a new video, which is very exciting. You know, I do rank my wrap ups in order of my least favorite book I read in the month to my most favorite book I've read in the month. That ensures we end on a positive note. So first up, we'll be talking about Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is a book that has been on my TBR for years, not four years, but four years. Actually, maybe four years. It's been on my TBR for a long time. I think maybe this book was overhyped for me. Maybe I would have liked it more if I would have read it when I first heard of it. I gave this book a three out of five stars, so it wasn't horrible. It was not bad. Actually, I was super enamored with it in the beginning. Like, the first half was just super captivating. I was super interested in our main character, Karu. I was super interested in this world that we're in and this Prague setting we find ourselves in in this book. And everything about it seemed really, really cool. The writing was epic. I loved everything. And then we get to that like halfway point and there's a shift in the narrative and the story and the things that are happening. And I hated that shift. I hate how it was brought about. I found it super predictable. I did really call almost everything that happened and I found it super tropey. I was not a fan of the insta-love. It was super dramatic insta-love and like over the top. And we had like two layers of insta-love. I was just like... That being said, I still am a big fan of Lainey Taylor's writing. I own all of the books in the series, so I will be reading the other two. I'm just not going to rush to them, most likely, because I didn't necessarily love this book. I only gave it a three out of five stars. I think it really is more like a two, 2.5 read, but because I love Blaney Taylor's writing so much and because I was so invested in the beginning half of it, I couldn't give it a two. Really disappointing for me, unfortunately. Next up, I read an e-arc I had called Fresh Ink, and this is an anthology. If you don't know, Lamar Giles, the editor of this anthology, is one of the co-founders of We Need Diverse Books, which is an initiative about, you know, diversifying the publishing industry and books in general, which is an amazing initiative. As with all anthologies, there were some stories in here that I liked more than others, some that I really fell flat for me. I rated them all, so I'll go ahead and post my Goodreads review down below so you can kind of see what stories I loved, what stories I didn't like, etc. I think my average, when I averaged all the ratings, that was like a 3.8, 3.9. So I just ran that up to four stars because I definitely think it deserves that four star rating. I loved, loved, loved a lot of the stories in this, really enjoyed some others. Didn't like a few, but the ones I didn't like, I really didn't like, which is why it brought the average rating down a little bit. Overall though, I think this is one of the better anthologies I've read. I usually end up giving them like a three stars and this one got definitely a four in my heart. So that's pretty good. I definitely recommend you reading this. They're all like diverse characters in one way or another. There's diff different stories being told, different narratives being constructed. Super great, super interesting. Definitely worth your time. Next up, I have a graphic novel and this is Moonstruck Volume 1, which is written by Grace Ellis and illustrated by Shay Eagle. This first volume is called Magic to Brew, which is super appropriate because our main characters in this book, they work at a coffee shop as baristas basically but this is a super magical world so we have werewolves and centaurs witches and ghosts and all kinds of fun things happening in here this is definitely a very diverse and inclusive story we have people of color we have obviously different species and like monsters and things like that but we also have like plus side characters and lgbt plus representation in this and all of it is so so great i actually read the first issue of this when it came out a year ago about i immediately fell in love and i read the entire collection of volume one which is the first five issues this month and it was great the narrative takes a very interesting turn but i really really liked it so I gave this a four out of five stars. Next up, I have a book that I did not intend on reading this month, and I'm not sure if I ever really intended on reading it. It was definitely a book I heard a lot about, but I was kind of myth on it. I had heard mixed reviews, and I wasn't sure how I personally felt about it. I was talking to two of my coworkers who are readers, 
and I was asking them for book recommendations just for the fun of it and one of them recommended this book and the other one had checked it out of the library so I ended up reading it on one co-worker's recommendation with my other co-worker so we could talk about it while we read it which was an amazing experience and that was a lot of preamble to tell you that the book that I read is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine which is written by Gail Honeyman so this is a story about an unlikable character who's named Eleanor Oliphant and she works in an office and it's about her life, her day-to-day -day life and her struggles, but also her going through kind of figuring out who she is and what she wants to be. She's in her 30s, I think. She's very standoffish. She doesn't talk to her work colleagues a lot and she's just kind of isolated in a lot of ways. And this is the story of Eleanor as she starts to decide she wants to try to come out of her shell. She has a lot of awkward experiences because she hasn't hung out with a lot of people and we get to know a lot more about her and her past. This book I did not expect to be as funny as it is. Eleanor is not like the most likable character by any means. She's super awkward and ridiculous she doesn't understand how many things work there's a scene where she goes to a mcdonald's she doesn't understand standing in line she doesn't think she should have to uh bus her own like things so she just leaves her tray there when she's done it was hilarious a lot of people extremely hate eleanor though i've read that in countless reviews heard it and a lot of people talking about this book i never hated eleanor i completely understood her and what was happening the entire time so i don't know if that played a part in it but there's like this like reveal three-fourths of the way and then at the very end there's some reveals and I kind of like called everything that was happening so I don't know if that played a part in me not hating Eleanor. This book definitely shocked me. I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. I was kind of worried because of those mixed reviews that I wouldn't like it. It reminded me a lot of actually um, A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I'm gonna talk about a trilogy that I started and completed this month. They all have different star ratings but this is the best place in my rating system to talk about the entire trilogy as a whole. The book that I will be talking about today is the All the Boys I Love Before Trilogy by Jenny Han. I loved this book. I've never understood the fake dating trope until I read this book. This is such a perfectly YA young adult angsty teen romance in all the good ways but it also tackles so many important issues and thoughts and high school experiences in a pretty good way. There are some things I don't like about the book. There's some slut shaming in this book but this is just a fantastic book. I really really appreciated it and I loved it and I really related to a lot of the things Laura Jean said about being biracial and I'm actually going to be doing a whole video about the biracial rap in these books so I won't get into it too much here but I just really connected with Laura Jean when she talked about that kind of stuff and I really appreciated everything that that was so I ended up giving this first book 4.5 stars. I loved it so much and the first book ends on enough of a cliffhanger that I immediately picked up P.S. I Still Love You and this book was really good. A lot of people say this is their least favorite in the series. I would have to agree this isn't my favorite in the series but I thought it was really strong still. I found this book to be super compelling and interesting and I loved it so much. I did really like the like love interest that comes into play here. Peter is OG and always and forever will be, but I really really liked McLaren's. I'm really interested in like his story plot and everything that happened with that. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. And then because I had already read two books off my TBR and I only had one left in the trilogy, I decided I might as well pick it up. So I right after read Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han, which is the conclusion to the trilogy. And this, in my opinion, was the strongest of the trilogy. By far. This follows Laura Jane in her senior year of high school as she's applying to colleges, getting acceptance or rejections back, dealing with all of that, moving on and maybe moving out, figuring out how a relationship can sustain itself past high school. And these are things I had to make a decision about when I was a senior in high school so I really enjoyed the discussion there and it felt very well done. Um, there was some unnecessary drama here but like that's what these books are about in a lot of ways so I didn't think it was bad by any means and I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. So with a 4.5, a 4, and a 5 these this trilogy rounds out to a 4.5 star trilogy for me. I really really loved it.
Next up is actually the first book I read in the month and I reread in the Afterlight by Agni Jabrakin. This is the third and final book in the Darkest Minds trilogy. I reread the first two last month. I think it's such a strong conclusion. It's one of my favorite conclusions to Dystopian, which it's no longer a conclusion, but you know, it, it was at the time. And I really, really love how this wrapped everything up and explained things. It was very emotional and gripping and I forgot a lot of things that happened in this. So I was still like super surprised by some moments which is always a good time. And I gave my reread of this five out of five stars just like I gave it the first time. Next up, I'm so, so excited to talk to you about this last book I have on this list. It's clearly my favorite I've read this month, but one of my favorites I've read this year. It's so strong, so powerful, so smart, so good. And that is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a super short book because it's told in verse. Beautiful, beautiful verse. It's such smartly crafted verse. And it's so quick to digest but powerful. This is about an African-American boy who's 15 and his older brother gets shot and he decides to take revenge. So this is his story within an elevator going down the floors to the lobby in order to go and kill the person who he thinks killed his brother. Elevator has some mystical qualities. This is a very powerful story about the cycle of gun violence and the decisions we make and thinking that those decisions we make are right and just and noble in the moment. So good. Like I said, incredibly quick because it's a short book and told in verse. I listened to the audiobook of this, which I definitely recommend doing. Those are all of the books I read in August. So that means that's all for my August wrap up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of those books, what you thought of them. And if you haven't read any of these books, tell me what your favorite book you read in August was. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.